Hi, Frank Thomas here. You bought junkie.com. I just wanted to uh, show you some things within you bought that you can do. These are designed to be very quick tutorials to kind of give you a heads up on how to do one thing or another. Uh, so to start, just so you know, this tutorial is based upon version 3.154. Version 3.3, which is uh, coming out the doors here very quickly. I've been testing the beta. Uh, the interface will change, but a lot of the concepts will not. So fortunately for that, what you learn here will be pretty transmutable to the newest version and the newest interface. And when I do see differences, I will recreate some of these tutorials so you can turn around and use them. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the elements of creating a bot here. First off, uh, a bot is created through using web pages. We're basically driving an Internet Explorer interface with inside of UBOT. And we can do just about everything that you can on the web page within, within the bot as you can in Internet Explorer. The only thing that I've come across is when you actually have to mouse click and drag something, then it's a bit of a problem. I've not yet figured out how to deal with that. It's something that could occur when you're you know, you're trying to do things like set up widgets within a WordPress blog and things like that. But, you know, with time I'll figure it out. But fortunately we can do just about everything. Now, what are the things that you will do? Let's take a look here. First of all, you have to have some way to see the page. You have to have some way to grab information from the page, enter information to the page, uh, work with the controls like, you know, the Google search, uh, as well as presenting information up here within either you're going to take a piece of information which will be entered into the bot or display a piece of information after the fact. So let's just do a simple bot where we will enter in something into Google search. Uh, it'll click search and it'll come back and we'll pull the actual numbers here. Let's just do a manual search here. Let's say my search phrase here is uh, looking at Google. Okay, so whenever you're creating a bot, you really want to look at what's actually happening and break it down. I recommend getting a piece of paper and just start writing down what's going on here. For the sake of recording this, I'm going to put a notepad here. So let's say the first thing we did here is we navigated to HTTP full colon two forward slash www.google.com. Next we entered a search phrase into the Google search box. Next we will um, click on the Google search button. So let's do that right now. Okay, now you notice there was just an, a small delay and it actually tells us it was 0.17 seconds of delay. Now if we don't wait for that delay, our bot is not going to work properly, so we have to make sure we wait for the page to finish. And UBOT also has the, the ability, let's say something like a piece of JavaScript is running in, on the actual page. JavaScript are like dynamic elements on the page that make it feel much like an application. Now let's say we have to wait and it's taking too long, we can actually time it out as well. And I'll show you how to do that in future tutorials. Very easy to do. But let's say we're going to have to wait for the page to finish. To ensure we can get or we call it scrape the info from the page. Okay. Next here, let me just uh, word wrap this. Okay, next here you know, where is our human eye going? It's looking at these results right here. Okay, but this is what we're looking for right here. That's what we want. So, we, wanna, we want to scrape the total results from the page. Okay, and what we can do to help ourselves out here is it, we'll be looking of about 
and I'm just going to use some health TCR to four. So what we're actually trying to scrape here is this piece of information between the less than and the greater than signs, or the greater than less than signs. So this is what we're looking for, but we're looking at the text around it too. Okay. So let's see what we have to do here. So let's do the first thing. Let's go back one. We can use the controls here. We have to navigate. Now, whenever you're creating a bot, I actually recommend that you create everything within something called a subroutine. Okay? Underneath flow commands, you can select sub. Each subroutine must be uniquely named within a bot and all the different subbots here that must be uniquely named if you have two different uh, they call them action scripts here like this is a, a script here an untitled script um, if I have another script down here with a different name with the same subroutine they will conflict you will get errors you have to make sure all subroutines are different but the idea behind a subroutine is if you just started you know starting from this first line the first line of our program is just started adding commands in what happens if later you say, hey, you know, it would be great if, or I'd like to be able to use all these commands. Now, in another bot, if you encapsulate a idea or a particular procedure within a subroutine, you can actually right-click on that, do a copy, and let's say we knew, do a new script here, and paste it into this new place. Of course, since it's a second copy of it, I've got two subroutines with the same name. I'd have to go in here, right click, and I can just insert string. I can just change this to a slightly different name. It's going to throw an error, but that's okay. That's that's normal. So now, if I do a refresh, when I decide to try to call that, because now later, you know, even though I've got a subroutine set up here, actually, let's just do something. Let's make the subroutine useful. Okay, to add in commands, you can hit right click and insert line or insert five lines or you can use your insert key on your keyboard and that's what I find that I do all the time here so I'm going to right click and I'm going to say okay the first thing we had to do is we had to navigate now I purposely as you can see left it to the page that I wanted to go to to avoid having to fill in where I'm going to navigate to now the navigate command remember we said here we have to wait later we had said we had to wait for a page finish when you actually use the navigate command, let's just take a look at that command quickly. One of the final pieces here is wait, yes or no, and you will 99.9% of the time want yes. What that does, and you can see the yes is selected here as well, is the navigate command automatically waits for the page to finish. So it's not going to do anything until the page come back, comes back. Okay, I'm all done. Let's go. Okay, you could do the same thing by and, uh, well, actually, let me hold off on that. I'm going to have to show you later here, so let's just hold off. But let's say we've done that. Now I'm going to just navigate to somewhere else. Okay, back to the original page. Now, if I run this script, nothing happens. Okay? We're not navigating. It's because, just because the subroutine is in here, it doesn't mean it's being run. We actually have to call that subroutine. Right click, and then we select flow, and then we hit run sub. And as you can see, we have run Google results, run Google results too. So I'm going to select the first one because that's the one we want. Now if I run it, okay, and now you see as soon as the page was finished, it finished the script. Okay, so that works great. But the next thing we need to do is we want to be able to enter something into the search phrase. We have to tell UBOT that this box is here and we want to fill that in. So the fastest way to do that is we right click now you see here on the top it could be input, TR, TDTR, T-body, uh, table form. I recommend that you learn a little bit about HTML. You don't need to be an HTML guru, but learn a little bit about it so you understand the differences here. In this particular case, I can literally choose the attribute. Okay, let's do that again. I'm jumping way far ahead here. Now let's take a look. Now the input is the direct, this is an input field. TD is a um, 